All right, I am somewhere in between Atlanta and Miami. I believe I am in the bottom of Georgia in a place called Valdosta. Fun fact, that was voted title town in some weird ESPN poll a long time ago. And that's the only reason I remember what it is. Someone please send coffee. We're off to Miami. Let's go. Welcome to another MLB 30 and 30. Thank you so much for stopping by. I'm sorry it took so long to get this out. I have been deathly sick, but you'll be happy to know I am COVID free and ready to rock and roll. Oh, good. We were all so, so worried and just hoping and shut up. Anyway, let's get to the park. But first, do me a big favor. Like the video, smash the subscribe button if you haven't already. I appreciate your support very much. Now, disclaimer, I went to all 30 parks and only had one bad experience along the entire trip, and it was here. And I'll get to that eventually. But first, I do want to focus on the positives. Let's have a good time. It is Lone Depot Park. Some quick facts about Lone Depot Park. It opened in 2012 in Miami, Florida as Marlins Park and its capacity is somehow 37,442, which is hilarious to me because for years, decades even, fans didn't go see them at their old stadium, Sun Life Stadium. So Miami built them an entirely new stadium for fans to still not go. It's actually a nice park. <laughs> Seems like it at least. I mean, nobody's here, but the park's nice. And for this one, a good buddy of mine drove a couple hours just to take part in the shenanigans. Introducing Pastor Tim, everybody. Thanks. Whatever the Cuban sandwich place over here has got to be the play for food, I yeah, would think. You got, a, you got Naked Taco, the Goya restaurant that's got uh, Cuban sandwiches, Argentina food right here that has ceviche. You're also going to have empanadas. To be fair, I'm closer to Argentina now than I think I ever will be in the United States, probably. Yeah, so I, I wouldn't recommend. Uh, I, I can't remember what they to can to can to canos, canos. What's that mean? It's uh, like a cheese deep fried roll. Okay. But they're not that great. The empanadas good. I'm not gonna lie, that sounds incredible. Are yeah. you sure they're not that? Okay. Yeah. Ins inside that inside that. information. Okay. Fair enough. I'm not gonna lie, I don't see how a deep fried cheese ball could not be great, but I trusted this guy. He's a man of the Lord. Anyway, after taking a quick lap just to see some of the sights, I asked him what's a great place to get a local beer. Right, this tell me game that again. Is right across the bridge from okay. the, uh, the, the ballpark here. Yeah. Okay. Pretty much everything's going to be local that's on draft. Perfect. Let's check it out. What's the second one, the green one? Chop. Oh, that actually, that might be the play, I think. I'll give that, I'll give that one a go. Tropical Bay IPA. But this Cubano Lager, I didn't forget about you. That we, but yeah, that one looks pretty good. It's closest to Cuban beer you're going to get. Okay. So You're not going to find another park in the league that's going to have something like that, I would yeah, think, it's so. It's very rare. Uh, Damien, what's up then, buddy? No, 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 man, I still got this. Let me get this one. The first one's on the I hate him. Absolutely hate this guy. Also, thank you very much. <laughs> Cheers, my man. Cheers, my Good times, you. absolutely. Okay. Above average, I'd put it right in the middle of the pack. They do a lot. They're, they've kind of slowly taken over as being like the local beer here in Miami. Okay. This is so sad. That's usually in like the five, six thousands at a normal park. Like, who's going to play that? <laughs> <laughs> and you only get half of it. Yeah. That is embarrassing from the organization. At least throw in like a thousand bucks and make it look like somebody's playing, but whatever. Anyway, let's get back to the food. If you're going to get a food item, a Cuban sandwich is always going to be classic Miami. Right. Sold. Cheers to a Cuban sandwich. Cheers to Miami. Solid. That is by far the Marlins' biggest fan. Actually, he's at the... Uh, He's at the Moonshine Slushy place, so he's probably he's feeling good. Lit up. Yeah. <laughs> so normally I just get one local beer, but since Tim was telling me about that local Cuban beer, I wanted to try that and see what it's all about. So let's find out. So this is Hatue beer. Okay. Made in a tradition of Havana, Cuba. So here in Little Havana, it's probably the most popular and most easily accessible beer for Miami, especially for people that want something that reminds them of Cuba. And so you can, there's almost no place to go in Little Havana where you will not find this beer, either on draft or by the bottle. And that's the facts, Jack. Cheers, buddy. Cheers. <laughs> I've seen a couple of parks with good views, but this is just ridiculous. I mean, look at, look at this view of Miami. So all of this, all this in the track, this entire wall opens up. And oh, I see, and yeah. It's completely open air. It makes for an amazing atmosphere. It opens and you see all of Miami. Right. The skyline, everything. 
And you were saying it's hard to find a game where it's open just because it's so friggin' hot down here. Yeah. The roof is almost never open. Um, they'll open this back wall up and still leave the roof closed. Right. There's even a museum inside the park, which you know I'm a sucker for, and it's chronicling the history of the Marlins, which I know I've given them a little bit of stick, but at the same time, they have two World Series championships, and a lot of franchises can't say that. They've had some legendary players over the years. I love that they're honoring that. So you're probably thinking good food, good beer, good views, good history, nice park. What's the problem? Let's talk about the Miami Marlins friendly staff and customer service. Now, I was back and forth on how to approach this because I was very angry at some things that happened that night. But at the same time, I'm a firm believer in you never know what someone next to you is going through. So always be kind to others. But there must have been a few people that had a bad day that day. But for that reason, I've made the decision not to post any footage from these incidents. And I know some of you out there will be saying, well, you're probably making it up then. But I don't really care. It's my video. And I don't want to post it because I don't want to shame anybody, even though I think that they did me wrong. But just in the interest of telling you my experience, let's run down what happened. At security, when trying to get in, they accused me of having something which I didn't have, and then when proven that I didn't have it, they pretty much called me a liar. And that seems like a small thing, but when you attack my integrity, that strikes a nerve. They tried to overcharge me for my concessions more than once. Now, that might be an honest mistake, but when it happens more than once, and given what had happened already, I was already just a little bit miffed. But okay, fine, we can move past that one, if it was an accident. Two people came up to me and Tim and tried to check our tickets to see if we were in the right seats. Now. Do I need to show you again how many people were in the stadium? This stadium holds almost 40,000 people and there were not 1,000 people in there. So, you know what? I mean, I'm willing to throw it out because if we were in the wrong seats, fine. You are technically doing your job and I cannot get mad at someone for doing their job, I guess. But come on, this is like pulling someone over for doing 41 and a 40. Rude members of the staff, both inside and outside the stadium, rolling their eyes when we ask them a question like, come on, are you serious right now? Finally, the team store. Now, just to get to the team store was an ordeal in general because one of the very knowledgeable customer service staff told us to go one way and exit the stadium, which actually caused us not being able to get back into the gates, which was where the team store was. We finally convinced someone to let us back in, and I know I said I wouldn't post any footage, but this was just too funny not to post. So there's no way to get to no the team store at all. And that's right there. It's literally right there. We'll go through the metal detector, everything. Like you're looking at everything I own. Tim said, here's everything I own. <laughs> <laughs> He's a man of God. He'd never tell a lie. Anyway, we get in the team store. There's no scorecards, no programs, no problem. I'll try to find something else. There are a display of postcard looking things, which I grab one that has the Marlins logo on it. And I go to try to pay for it. And I'm told, you can't have that. I'm sorry. I'm just trying to buy it. It's not for sale. So I can't have it. And as I'm saying, so I can't have it and I can't buy it. You ever see the episode of Seinfeld with the soup Nazi? That's exactly what happened. Like snatches it out of my hand and basically says like, get out of my line. And I'm just baffled at this point, but more importantly, I'm done. I've had enough. Whatever. No problem. I'm so upset I didn't get that on film. All right. All right. I can 100% confirm this will be the last time I ever come to this stadium. I'm so baffled right now about this entire experience. That was weird. That, I, 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 don't, I don't even know how to react. I don't either. Yeah. <laughs> I wish I got it on film. Everybody in line is shocked. Like, <laughs> it is the most minuscule of 20 cent postcards. Oh my what just happened? Like he, he he snatched it from me like I was trying to smuggle something in. I don't know if you saw that. <laughs> this is the hardest ballpark to spend money in. <laughs> Dude, that was something. So let me get this straight. Just because they don't treat you like royalty and roll out the red carpet, you're going to complain about all this stuff? No, not at all. And let me be as clear as day. These are just little things that happen to me in a baseball game. In the grand scheme of life, none of this matters. It's not like I lost sleep over. It's not like it even affected me an hour afterwards. It's yeah, just you don't sound like it bothers you at all. No, it agitated me for sure. Don't get me wrong. But the main issue I have is that I've heard from other people that have had similar experiences. So apparently this is an organizational thing. And you wonder why you don't get very many people inside your stadium. What if I had a family there with kids? and they treated the kids this way. I'd probably be a little bit more aggravated than I am now. But honestly, I want to be wrong about this because as I said, this was the only bad experience I had on the whole trip. So I want to hear from you. If you've had a Marlins experience, good or bad, please leave that in the comments section below. And please understand, this is not a ploy to get hits or views or comments or controversy or anything like that. It's just the personal experience I had and I had to be honest with you. But enough of that, we're moving on. Tomorrow is Tampa. We're 14 parks in, almost halfway there, and it's time to get back to the good times, which I promise you we will do. But don't forget to like and subscribe. I will see you next time. Peace and love. Hustle, hustle all day.